Hey guys, Mr. Milson here. Today we're going to learn about solving systems of equations by using the substitution method. At the end of this video, you should be able to solve systems of equations by substitution. Okay. All right. The substitution method allows you to create a one variable equation. Substitution method allows you to create a one variable equation. Okay. So to answer the question, when will we use the substitution method? We probably want to know, you know, when when a problem lends itself to the method. And that's when a variable in one of the equations is by itself. Okay. Not that that's the only time that we can do it, but it's when it lends itself um, the best. So if we're looking at this next section, which system or systems are set up for the substitution method? Okay, and remember, we say this one of variables by itself. And so we see that that happens in our first equation, our first system of equations, because A is by itself in the second equation. In our second system of equations, um, well, none of the variables are by themselves right now, so really is not set up for substitution very well. And our third one, um, we see that J is by itself in the top equation and J is by itself in the second equation, so that one's also set up pretty well for substitution, okay? All right, now I like to think of substitution as nicknames, um, or you're essentially finding out that one thing is the same as the other, and so we replace it later, okay? Um, so let's look at our first example, and I'll show you what that means. So in our first example, we have the system y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals x plus 3. Now, we talked about solving these using graphing um, in the last lesson, but um, graphing is pro probably not that realistic realistic of a method in most situations because you don't walk around with graph paper in your pocket. Okay. All right. Now, substitution, we can make this an equation that we can do on any kind of scrap paper. Okay. In our first equation, we know that we can't solve this because we have two variables in one equation. Okay. And our second equation by itself, we can't solve it because, again, we have two variables in one equation. But if we use these equations together, it helps us out because in this first equation, we say y equals 2x plus 1, or y is the same as 2x plus 1. In the second equation, we say y is the same as x plus 3. And it's important for us to realize that equals means is the same. I know that we, we should know that. Um but I think it's extra important in this in this lesson so that we can see where substitution comes into play. So what I'm going to do is now instead of in the second equation saying y equals x plus 3, because we already said we can't solve this because there's two variables, I'm now going to say not y but 2x plus 1, because I've already said that y is the same as 2x plus 1. And that will solve a problem for me because now 2x plus 1 equals x plus 3. I have an equation with one variable, so it's solvable. Okay, I substituted 2x plus 1 for y because it's the same thing. I didn't change anything. And now I can solve this equation for x. Okay, it's like any other equation with a variable on both sides. I'll subtract x from both sides. I'll subtract 1 from both sides. And now that leaves me with x equals 2. Okay, so these x's cancel out, these 1's cancel out. x equals 2. And now that I know what x is, I can plug this into either of the equations to find out what y will be. And it shouldn't matter which equation I plug it into. Okay, so I'll plug it into the top equation. y equals 2 times 2 plus 1. Right, because now that I know that x is 2, I'm going to use 2 instead of x. And now I'll solve it. y equals 4 plus 1, or so I see that x is 2, y is 5. Okay, we'll still want to write our uh, solution as an ordered pair. Okay, this is just a different method of solving systems. We write our solutions as an ordered pair when we're graphing. We'll write our solutions as an ordered pair when we 
be solved by any other method. Okay, so our solution is 2, 5. And we should see that if we plug 2, 5 into either equation, it should make it true. So if I plugged it into the second, second equation, plug 5 in for y, plug 2 in for x, and we'll see that 5 equals 2 plus 3. Yep, works. This is our solution, 2, 5. Okay. I'd like you to try, I know this is number 3, but I'll tell you that I'm going to skip this one to the right and tell you to try that on your own. And I want to look at number 2 together here. Okay. So number two, when we looked at our um, first set of problems, I asked you which ones are set up for substitution, and a problem like this would not be set up, quotations, for substitution. But I could still ask you to solve this by substitution method. Okay, and this is all we have to do. A problem is set up, by sub or set up for substitution when a variable is by itself. Okay, so what we'll have to do to make this set up for substitution is just get a variable by itself. Looking at the systems, which variable is closest to being by itself? Okay, so if we look at these two equations, we have 3x plus y equals 5 and 6x plus 2y equals 10. If I say which one looks like it should be the easiest to get by itself, I hope you say the y in the top equation. Okay, what will we have to do to get y by itself? Well, there's, it's only one step away. If we subtracted 3x from both sides, then y would be by itself. Okay, so let's do that. 3x plus y equals 5. We'll subtract 3x from both sides. And that means y will be negative 3x plus 5. Alright, and now that y is by itself. I can now substitute. Anytime I see y, I can say, wait, y is the same as negative 3x plus 5. I'm going to write negative 3x plus 5 instead of y. We'll do that in the second equation. Okay, so now in the second equation, I can say 6x plus 2, and not y, but negative 3x plus 5 equals 10. And you see that substitution. I substituted that in. Okay, and now... We see that there's an equation here with one variable, just x, in different places, but it's just one variable, that we can solve for. Make sure you don't forget the basics. Distribute to both terms. 6x minus 6x plus 10 equals 10. Whoa, crazy. All right. 6x minus 6x, that gives us 0. And we are at a spot where we have 10 equals 10. What does that mean? What does it mean that we have something equaling itself? Well, hopefully it's a flashback to what we we did in the first chapter. And we see that an equation, one side of the equation, equals the other side of the equation. And that means that no matter what numbers we plug in, this will work out. Okay, and so we see that these are, we have infinitely many solutions. Okay, so we have a special case that just popped up here. And we'll talk about how those interact with each other um, and relate to graphing as we move forward. Okay, let's deal with some more special cases on the back here. We have 3x minus y equals negative 2, and y equals 3x plus 2. Okay, so you'll see that this is already set up for um, substitution because we have the y by itself in the second equation. And so now what we're going to do, um, in this first equation, we have 3x minus y. But instead of writing y, we're going to plug in 3x minus 2. Or sorry, 3x plus 2. Okay, again, please don't forget the basics. We need to make sure that we distribute this negative to both terms. If you just make this negative 3x, you're going to mess up the problem. So we have 3x minus 3x minus 2 equals negative 2. 3x minus 3x is 0. 0 minus 2. So we have negative 2 equals negative 2. 
just like we had in our last problem, and that is infinitely many solutions. Okay? In our next problem, we have y equals 5 minus 3x. And so, and 6x plus 2y equals 1. So our first equation of this system is set up for, for us to use a substitution. And in my next equation, instead of using y, I'm going to use 5 minus 3x, because I know that they are the same. y is the same as 5 minus 3x. So I have 6x plus 2 times 5 minus 3x equals 1. I'll distribute. Okay. Okay, so I have 6x minus 6x. Again, we should see that that gives us 0. So I have 10 equals 1. When does 10 equal 1? Never. 10 does not equal 1. Make sure I did all my steps right. I did. I got to a point where this is an incorrect statement. Okay? And so I see that this is no solution. Okay, so here are special cases there. Um, just a quick reminder and kind of a connection to graphing. Remember that if our lines are infinitely many solutions, then we would see that if we graphed them, they should look something like this. One line. Okay, because they should be the same line. That's why there's infinitely many solutions. Otherwise, they'd only have one solution. And if our lines have no solutions, then what will be the case is that our lines will look something like this. They'll be parallel because no solutions means that our lines don't intersect. Okay, so we could see that if, even if I asked you to solve by substitution and then I said, what do you know about these lines? If there's no solution, you should know that the lines are parallel. If there are infinitely many solutions, you should know that the lines are the same line, same y-intercept, same slope. Okay. All right, we'll make sure that we connect graphing and substitution, and then we see that they're solving the same problem with different methods. But hopefully, from this video, you should be able to solve systems of equations by substitution. See it.